Joining me is former Hereford United goalkeeper Matt Baker. Matt, you joined Hereford in the year 2000 from Hull. And how did Hereford know about you? Because mostly the players that they signed in that era were from the Midlands, but to go all the way up from Hull, um, how did uh, Graham Turner and Ron Dukes know about you? The answer is I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I know that's, that's something I never, ever thought about, actually. It's a good question. Um, I think at that time there was a, a circular just went around from all the people released from league clubs and Ron used to be pretty up on, on players available and I just got invited down to uh, come and train with him for a while and you know everything sort of worked out from there. The first season you were understudy to Scott Cooksey. How important mm. was Scott to your development as a goalkeeper? Uh, well, he was a big, he was a large and life character, isn't he? And I think probably what came across more was his, his, his confidence and his... His, his ability just to sort of say it as it is and not sort of worry about a decision he'd made but to actually just make one because often you know it's very easy to uh, to criticise after the fact you should have done this you might have done that but nobody ever criticises anybody who doesn't make a decision and you don't make a decision you never do anything wrong and you never actually end up doing anything so I think his, his ability to make decisions and his, his, his sort of confidence sort of uh, rubbed off on me if you like you made over 100 appearances for Hereford. Are there any games that stick out in the memory? Uh, yeah, Chester away. Um, the season we almost got promoted, that, that was a good one because it was, I think it was early on and it was, a, it was a tough game. I think I ended up saving a penalty. I think it was nil-nil. That was, that was a good one. Um, well, Stevenage away, I think that was a good one because that was early on in the same season, I think. And they were, you know, they were quite big spenders at that time. I think we ended up winning 2-0 with a penalty on that day as well. So they're, for, <laughs> they're the two that come to mind quite quickly. There was one I was watching on YouTube the other day, um, Wrexham FA Cup, live yeah, on BBC yeah, that, One. Um, you made that, some fantastic that, saves that afternoon. That was too easy, though. Everyone remembers that one. So, yeah, I, I remember, funnily enough, we stayed, it was an early kickoff. I think it was a 12 o'clock kickoff or an early kickoff. So we actually stayed in the hotel the night before, which like, obviously at that time never happened because we had no money. Um, I remember I remember our team talk in the game before, in the fourth qualifying round, we were away at Dover, and it was awful. What a horrible day. It was freezing, it was just rubbish. And it was, we pretty much got given the message that, you know, if we don't win, we might not get paid the week afterwards. That's how bad things were with the cash flow. Um, and we won 1-0. I think we scored quite early. And it was quite a nervy last 20 minutes. And obviously then that threw up the game against Wrexham, which gave us the TV money and the advertising money. Um, and the occasion, because it was John Motson's sort of 30th anniversary of him commentating on the famous Hereford win before. So it all sort of added into the atmosphere. And yeah, it was. I remember the night before being up in the, uh, in the hotel room eating ice cream, thinking, oh, it could be a good day tomorrow. I mean, who knew it was going to turn out as it did? You mentioned the financial problems at the club. How did Graham yeah. Turner try and protect the players? Because um, obviously he was the chairman and the manager, knowing that you know that the finances were so bad. Did he, did he do a good job of trying to protect you all from the stresses of that? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I can't speak how, I, how he managed it. He's, he's like Houdini. No idea. You know, he would cook the he would cook the food. He would cut the grass. Uh, he, he kept that club going so you know it's quite sad to see what happened after he left because you know th th there was obviously a lot more money about um, with the club in the football league um, and for it to go the way it did was was pretty sad to see but yeah I can't speak highly enough of what he did absolutely incredible never really let the players know but obviously you could see it in him you know how it took its toll but that was the only real time he'd ever sort of mentioned how important it was and uh, um, and we managed to do it keep it going the 2003-2004 team was one of my favourite um, Hereford United squads you know how, how good was that team? Oh, there are, there are, I think about a year before we had a guy come in who was doing a lot of university work um, older guy and he was talking about professional athletes he was probably ahead of his time he was talking about the nine stages of flow and how things just happen and, and you know sometimes when you're in that peak performance zone you can't quite explain what you're doing it and then 
when you're not in it, you're always searching for those things that got you to try and get you back into that area. And and sometimes you just can't put your finger on it. And that team was a bit like that. We were just, everybody was such good friends. We all got on. We were all a similar age. We all come from sort of similar backgrounds of other clubs. And this was our chance to, to, to get back to another level. And hopefully we were all going to do it together. It was, it really felt like we were doing something. And I remember in the last sort of 15 games or something like that, we were on an incredible run. Maybe it was 13 games, I can't remember. And we were away at Halifax and we were losing. We knew we weren't going to lose the game. It was bizarre. We'd not built it particularly well. We were behind, I think, to a penalty. And Andy Tretton turned to me, <laughs> turned to me and just said, oh, I'm just going to go write myself into Harris folklore. And he ran up for a corner. And I think he just headed it in. And we ended up winning 2-1. And it was that kind of mentality that we just all fully trusted each other. We all had each other's backs. And, you know, you, you'd think that would be a given in professional football, but it's very rare. I think if, if you find it once in your career, you've, you're very lucky. And it was just a travesty we never got promoted that year. How much of a heartbreak was it to go out on penalties to all the shot in the playoffs? Oh, it was, it was horrible. Yeah, because obviously we'd been robbed. We were, we, yeah, everybody says this when they lose. We'd been robbed. You know, Andy Trenton got sent off for absolutely no reason. Uh, I mean, I've seen him lots of times over the years at other games, spoken to him, and you know, and, you know, I think he, he himself admitted he might have been a little bit quick to pull the card out, but uh, terrible decision for for us to hang on the way we did. It was like the Alamo sometimes in that game to get to penalties, and then to lose on penalties was just yeah, it was just awful. You left Hereford that summer to join Wrexham. Was there any regret that you didn't stay and see the job through and get the club up to the Football League? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, t- I took a pay cut to leave. <laughs> I don't know how many players would say that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, quite a big pay cut to leave. So, um, it was... You know, the chance of going up, playing two divisions higher was really an opportunity. You can, you're always wanting to better yourself. You're always wanting to play at the highest level you possibly can. You know, and, and those opportunities might never come around again. So, on one hand, it was awful to leave. Um, and on the other hand, I almost had no choice. So, um, I had another offer to leave to go to Barnet that summer, funnily enough. And had I had done that, they got promoted that year as well. So, lots of things you could look back and say, well, if I'd have done this, if I'd have done that. But, no, it was it was the right decision. It was just, it was just a travesty. We couldn't get promoted and... Had we got promoted, I would have actually absolutely stayed. And you still involved in football now? Uh, I am for my things. Yes, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I work for the Sun on a, on a weekend, uh, reporting on matches. So sometimes on the radio as well, BBC local radio, for, uh, three counties radio. If Milton Keynes are anywhere up north, combine the combine the roles. But yeah, no, I've been doing the Sun work now for ten years. So it's uh, see lots of familiar faces around um, on my travels, so it's, it's always nice. And you still keep up to tabs with what's going on with Hereford FC because they're now a league down from what you were when you joined them, but on the, on the way up, though. Uh, it's a great story, isn't it? It would be an ma- absolutely magnificent story. It reminds me of the sort of Wimbledon story where I, <laughs> I remember going to a three Doms in 2004 I um, couldn't figure out what all the fuss was about, you know, all this, you know, franchise football and everything. I could never understand it because, uh, but obviously, the longer it goes on and the longer you're there, you sort of understand the politics of it and, and, and the struggle that Wimbledon then re- went and reformed and sort of started again, if you like. And Hereford have had to do the same thing in, in many ways. Um, so it's been fantastic to see such it, it just shows you when you get a bit of momentum in a football club no matter what level you're at it, it, it can change things very quickly the, the reverse can be true on the downside you know plenty of good examples of Premier League clubs being in League One Leeds did it Sunderland done it recently you know once you get that momentum whichever way it goes it can really transform things and it's great to see that that have been on the up and up Hopefully they can get back into the conference, and then once you're in there, then you know the the, the thoughts of football league football have become a lot more real.